Are you ready for what's about to come? Betelgeuse, the red supergiant star that is closest to Earth, started dimming substantially in recent years, which caused excitement and fear all around the world. Some people thought the major event was about to happen because of the random dimming which typically happens before a supernova event. However, Betelgeuse has not yet erupted. Since then, this prominent star in Orion, Hunter's constellation, has recovered brightness, dimmed, brightened, and appears to be now transitioning back to a less active condition. Betelgeuse is surely nearing the end of its lifespan, and it has scientists worried about just how big of an explosion it will let off once it finally decides to end it all. How close are we to seeing Betelgeuse undergo a supernova? And is its explosion going to take Earth with it? Let's find out in this episode of Voyager. Orion is one of the most recognizable constellations in the night sky, along with the Great Bear and the Southern Cross. It has two first magnitude stars, Rigel and Betelgeuse, officially known as Beta and Alpha Orionis, and is both brighter and bigger than the Bear and the Cross. Astronomers have determined, after examining data from NASA's Hubble Space Telescope and a number of other observatories, that the bright red supergiant star Betelgeuse physically blew its top in 2019. Betelgeuse created a massive surface mass ejection, SME, and lost a significant portion of its visible surface. This is a behavior in a star that has never before been observed. A coronal mass ejection, CME, which occurs frequently on our Sun, is a process wherein a portion of the Sun's flimsy outer atmosphere, the corona, is blown away. However, the Betelgeuse SME ejected 400 billion times more mass than an average CME. Therefore, it appears that a cloud of hot gas that the star released and temporarily covered some of the star's light was what produced the odd darkening of Betelgeuse. Although some estimates place it farther away, Betelgeuse may be as nearby as 724 light years from Earth. Determining the distances of red supergiant stars like Betelgeuse is a challenging subject in astronomy. Despite being far away, Betelgeuse is one of the brightest stars in the sky due to its inherent brilliance. It is around 100,000 times brighter than the Sun. Such brilliance has a cost because Betelgeuse's immense energy soon depletes its fuel, hastening the end of its existence. The star will eventually run out of fuel and disintegrate under its own weight. Since its primary nuclear fuels have been depleted, it will eventually face doom. If our present hypotheses are correct, it will supernova erupt and eventually become a neutron star or more likely a black hole. Is the Earth in danger from Betelgeuse? Undoubtedly, a supernova outburst that occurred within a few tens of light years of Earth would have the worst effects. When a supernova explodes, it can produce light equivalent to a whole galaxy. So if one of our close neighbors like Alpha Centauri decided to act in this way, we couldn't ignore it. It wouldn't matter if it shone as brightly as the moon, because it would be bathing us in a radiation of all kinds, but it would. Since 1604, we have not observed a supernova in our galaxy. Nevertheless, in 1987, one erupted in the large cloud of Magellan, with effects that were plainly discernible even at a distance of 169,000 light years. Although there was no risk, it is fortunate that the large cloud is so far away. The danger zone around a typical supernova is an interesting concept to work with. What would occur if a supernova exploded nearby? Supernovae are not the largest explosions in the universe, and they appear nearly insignificant in comparison to gamma ray bursters. But that is a very different matter. Supernovas are bad news. They have the power to destroy biospheres and cover worlds with lethal radiation. The ozone layer of a planet can be destroyed by a particular kind of supernova years after the explosion, according to a recent study which adds a new potential danger. Giant stars can briefly attain some of the highest luminosities in the universe when they explode in large explosions known as supernovas. The brightness from hundreds of billions of stars combined can be eclipsed by a single supernova. Will Earth be destroyed by a Betelgeuse supernova? The star will be the second brightest object in our sky after the Sun when it goes supernova, despite being over Betelgeuse light years away from us. Betelgeuse, which shines brighter than a full moon, will be visible during the day. It will be so dazzling for a few weeks at the height of the explosion that shadows will be cast even in the dead of darkness. Despite its terrifying brilliance, a supernova's visible light emission only makes up a very small amount of its total energy production. Furthermore, while exposure to high levels of visible light may result in blindness, 
It doesn't generally have many other detrimental impacts. The high energy radiation linked to the supernova, which typically takes the form of X-rays and gamma rays, is more concerning. High energy radiation has the ability to catalyze oxygen, removing the ozone layer that shields the Earth. Without the ozone layer, life on Earth's surface would be subjected to the full force of the sun's UV radiation, which could result in an extinction event. Within the initial few seconds of a supernova, a radiation blast occurs, but a greater threat emerges afterward. Eventually, hundreds or millions of years later, cosmic rays, which are subatomic particles accelerated to almost the speed of light, erupt from the maelstrom. They can also shred ozone layers and cover a planet's surface with deadly radiation in addition to carrying a sizable portion of the total supernova energy with them. Such occurrences might have occurred in the past. Significant levels of iron-60, a radioactive isotope of iron created only in supernovas, are found in deep-sea cores and lunar regolith, according to analysis. Iron-60 is a sign that Earth was recently struck by a supernova ejector, possibly within the last few million years. Astronomers have previously determined that we are pretty safe. There are no close supernova candidates that can endanger life on Earth based on the dangers posed by gamma rays and cosmic rays. But astronomers have discovered a fresh possible risk. A specific type of supernova has the potential to emit deadly radiation that is additional, long-range and dangerous to worlds like Earth. When a star nearing the end of its life is surrounded by a substantial disk of material, a specific class of supernova arises. A shockwave arises after the initial supernova explosion and strikes that disk. The shockwave causes the disk to become extremely hot, which in turn leads the disk to generate a lot of X-ray radiation. This radiation has a high energy density and a very long range of travel. The brightest X-ray supernovas can overwhelm a planet's ozone layer, depleting it by as much as 50%, which is more than enough to cause an extinction event out to an astonishing distance of 150 light years. Such supernovas would deliver a lethal one-two blow. A fragile planet would be bombarded by X-rays months or years after the initial outburst. The cosmic rays would then arrive hundreds or thousands of years later and complete the task before the biosphere had time to recuperate and replace its protective covering. Thankfully, no candidate X-ray supernova has been found to be close to Earth. But the galactic habitable zone, the area in each galaxy where life can exist, is now subject to additional restrictions as a result of this research. Star formation is insufficiently high in a galaxy's farthest regions to produce the elements needed to generate rocky planets. However, the dense centers of stars, where stars live and die quickly, are equally fatal because frequent supernovae irradiate the area around them. According to the new research, the galactic habitable zone's inner boundary is likely located further from the galaxy's core than previously thought. Earth is located in one of the galaxy's safest neighborhoods, despite occasionally being hit. What time will Betelgeuse go off? Most likely it won't occur during our lifetimes. However, nobody actually knows when it will blow up. It might occur today or in a million years. What will the supernova explosion of Betelgeuse look like from Earth? The Earth's biosphere won't be affected, but that doesn't guarantee that nobody will notice. According to Goldberg and Bauer, Betelgeuse will light for more than three months after its explosion at a brightness comparable to the half-moon, which is nine times fainter than the full moon. A single point would contain all of this brilliance. As a result, it would seem like a very bright beacon in the sky that you could see during the day and that would throw shadows at night. It would be inevitable, and everyone on the planet would be fascinated by it. The supernova would be visible to people in the daytime sky for around a year, and as the supernova remnant dims, it will be visible to the human eye at night for several years. Orion will not have its left shoulder by the time it fades completely. Although the stellar explosion is not a major concern, the supernova could nevertheless have some unexpected effects on Earth. For instance, many animals rely on the moon for navigation and find artificial lights to be confusing. It might be disruptive to add a second object that is as brilliant as the moon. Not only would wildlife be disrupted, but strangely astronomers themselves would struggle. Astronomical observations are already challenging. For a while there wouldn't be a dark time. It would be difficult enough to study Betelgeuse. Their instruments would be damaged by the intense light. Astronomers also claim that there will be plenty of notice if Betelgeuse does defy the odds and explode within our lifetimes. 
Instruments on Earth would begin spotting gravitational waves or neutrinos produced by the explosion up to a day beforehand. Imagine a significant portion of the population staying up late to watch Betelgeuse's light display, waiting for it to begin and cheering when it does. But Betelgeuse doesn't need to blow up to be fascinating to scientists. It's big and bright, which makes studying there quite simple. Astronomers find it fascinating because they may examine a star that is getting close to the end of its existence in great detail. The physics inside Betelgeuse's interior structure is fascinating. It is based on what scientists already know about the star and similar stars that they have made their best prediction as to what is happening right now. That study indicates that Betelgeuse's brightness may be altering for a variety of causes. Some astronomers even think that multiple dimming mechanisms may be in action simultaneously. Near the conclusion of their lives, red supergiant stars begin to swell and form expanding envelopes of gas and dust as their nuclear fuel runs out, and the star's brilliance increases as its envelope expands. But a star like Betelgeuse can dim and brighten in other ways as well. Additionally, red supergiant stars have vast convective cells on their surfaces that are similar to much larger variations of those on our Sun and are where hot material rises from the star's interior due to turbulence. A portion of that material violently explodes into space as it reaches the surface, creating a massive radioactive belch that can momentarily alter the brightness of the object. And the dimming of Betelgeuse might even be a sign that it's going to blow up. Usually, as material emerges from the surface of a dying star, it collides, making the star shine brighter. It's also possible that this substance is shrouding the star, which would make it fainter. Regardless of its underlying origin, the peculiar behavior should ultimately reveal fresh information about red supergiant star's final moments. And everyone on Earth will be in the front row. In conclusion, Betelgeuse will eventually erupt as a supernova. If and when it does erupt, it will appear bright enough to us on Earth to glow during the day. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.